Right, so a number of 60 Symbols viewers have uh, sent Brady and, uh, emails about a game that was released very recently called Portal 2, sequel to Portal, and have asked whether any of the physicists here in the department would be interested in commenting on it because it's a rather sciencey game. It's got lots of apparently physics concepts, mad stuff like wormholes, quantum physics, interesting playing around with ideas for momentum, conservation of energy. Uh, it, looks, it looks fascinating. So this morning I downloaded Portal 2. It's been a long, long time actually since I played a video game. I'm a child of the... well I was born in 68. Uh, my video game days were in the late 70s, early 80s. Um, in terms of first player shoot 'em ups and first player role playing games, it's something I've never really got into. Portal 2 is very, very, very different. Um, I've been incredibly impressed by it. Sorry, Brady, I'm just, it, it does get confusing. Let's do it this way. Do you want to start from here? Yeah, go right. Ahead. So, what you have here is a portal gun. The portal, the portal gun allows you to create portals, which are basically wormholes, uh, loops in space, and I guess loops also in time, but in this game you don't see the... the... <sighs> <sighs> it, there, there are interesting aspects of this. The, the one thing that's flagged up a lot in, in many of the reviews is the, the conservation of momentum. And it's interesting because I was going to try and draw this out. I actually got it. Got this from the Wikipedia site. This is this is the classic example of of, of what they mean by that. So in this this diagram, which is taken from Wikipedia, what what's happening is that this guy wants to get from here to here, but he hasn't got enough energy to get from there to there. He just can't make that jump. So instead, what he does is he uses his portal gun to put a portal there, and there's another portal here, and he jumps in here. When he jumps from here, his gravitational potential energy turns into kinetic energy and he gains enough energy coming out of this, this um, uh, portal to make it across and land on here. Yeah, seems pretty good. It seems pretty good. Now it's argued that this is con conservation of momentum. Momentum is mass times velocity. But velocity is a vector. So velocity not only has a magnitude, it also has a, has, has a direction. So if we take this ball Oh, where can I do this? Let me just clear, clear off some way. If this is travelling with a certain speed, with a certain mass, then it has a certain momentum. But if it travels in this direction, or if it travels in that direction, or if it travels in that direction, or if it travels in that direction, its momentum is actually changing. Its speed can stay the same, but its momentum is changing because momentum is a vector quantity which means it has, a, has a, a, a value and a direction, a magnitude and a direction. So in this case, what's interesting about this is that in, in the, the portal game, the, the, the computer Gladys, the artificial intelligence, says at one point, I've actually written it down, you appear to understand how portal affects forward momentum, or to be more precise, how it does not. And the, the line is something along the lines of speedy thing in, speedy thing out. That sort of gets conservation of momentum, but it doesn't get all of it. The speed is conserved, the velocity isn't. Here, he's accelerating downwards through this, but here, his, the direction of his momentum is in a completely different direction. Yeah. So there is an understanding there, and it, they've certainly g gone out of the way to build in some physics. But what's interesting is that the physics is perhaps not quite as it says on the tin. I wouldn't quite describe this entirely as, as conservation momentum. It's, okay, so it's science, it's science fiction, let's be honest. It's, we're talking about wormholes that we can position with a gun with no apparent energy source and certainly not the ability to, to capture the energy of billions and billions of suns to warp space time. So it's science fiction. But, of course, science fiction builds on elements of science. I'm less concerned about the abuse of if you want to call it that, of scientific terms in science fiction, where it's fiction than I am in terms of pseudoscience, where people are trying to claim that this stuff refers to the real world. So let's be clear here. There's, 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 so let's be honest. Um, it, it's a bit, I guess it's a bit unfair to criticise a game for the um, uh, v reliability and validity of its physics when we're trying to cart around um, or trying to place individual wormholes in space and time that just are never going to be possible to create in this fashion. So let's not be too critical on that. On the other hand, 
What's interesting about this is it is it's self consistent. It's got its own logic. It's got its own laws, and they do seem to. I've only, I'm, as anybody who's played this game and has got to the end of it, and you know, in a matter of a couple of hours, I've been playing it for maybe for about an hour, and I'm pretty inept at it. Um, but the, the 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 key thing here is that as you build on level and level upon level, you're building up skills, and it's consistent. The laws of physics within this world seem to be consistent. And that's, that's really quite a neat intellectual challenge in terms of how you exploit those different, different laws. So, yes, there, there are difficulties in terms of how they explain the physics, but does that really irritate me? No. I think it's, it's, it's a really nice way, I think, of introducing people to, to physics ideas. And then if people want to go and explore, and if you look on the web, there are countless forums, you know, could this happen? Um, we've had 60 Symbols viewers, of course, email us or email Brady and ask us, could this happen? And if you're generating that level of questions about physics, that can only be a good thing. As I started playing it, playing it you get drawn into these, these puzzles very quickly. And I think the reason you get drawn in as a physicist is because you're, you, are, you are trying to um, move these objects around. You know they've got certain laws that they follow. And what you're trying to do is exploit those laws and exploit the sort of interesting physics in this landscape to allow you to solve these problems. So I got drawn into it very, very, very quickly. So, so with many of these games, and particularly Portal 2, well, the computer has to, has to do the calculations, and it has to take the laws of physics and the equations of physics, and it has to solve them. And what it's doing is basically solving what we call differential equations. Now, I don't want the entire viewership of 60 symbols to switch off the moment I say the differential equations. They're really not that difficult, although even first year, second year, third year undergraduates break out in a cold sweat when we mention them. Differential equation, the simplest possible differential equation. You're probably going to cut this out, Brady, but I'll, I need to get a marker. We'll see. I'm sure this won't make the final cut, but we'll see. What is velocity? Or what's, let's even make it simple. What's, what's speed? Let's call... Hang on, hang on, hang on. I might stop this before. <laughs> no, go on, go on. Okay, let's talk about velocity. But what I'm talking about here is not the direction of I'm just talking about the magnitude of the velocity. So I'm talking about 40 miles an hour, or 40 meters per second or whatever. Let's call that V. How do we define that? Well, what we have is velocity is the change in position, delta represents a change, and let's call position x. So here's position 1, here's position 2. That distance between those we'll call delta x, divided by a change in time. Okay, so let's just work this through. Let's say we've got a speed of 1 meter per second, delta x is 1 meter, Delta t is one second, so it's one meter per second. Now what the computer has to do is solve that. And the way it does, is, it does that is actually we can thank a, 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 a mathematician, German mathematician called Euler. What it does is it takes the initial position of the ball and then it works out where its next position is going to be. And if the velocity's um, uh, constant, then it's very, very simple to do that because delta x the change in the position of the ball is just the velocity times delta t. And that's it. So if you want to know, if you've got the ball here and it's moving along, and you want to know at the next time what its position is, then you can know how far it's moved just by multiplying the velocity by the, the, the time, um, the unit of time, the increment of time. And the computer actually solves these equations. That's what it does. It works out. Um, solving differential equations like this, very, very many of them. But this is the simplest possible. What I'm doing is, is giving you the simplest possible equation. That's when something's moving at constant speed. Okay? If we've got a force on something, then we end up with a more complicated differential equation. If we want to put fluids in there, then we end up with even more complicated differential equations. If we've got a ball falling under gravity, then it's constant acceleration, which means the velocity is changing all the time, yet another differential equation. What we have to do, and what the physics engine has to do in all these games, is put all that together, solve all those equations. Many of them are coupled together. Do that countless millions and millions of times a second, update the graphics, and, and, and compute this so that the, the equations that embed the reality of the physics 
I mean, that, that translates to the computer game and it feels real to you. But it's mathematics, it's mathematical physics. And we tend to avoid maths and 60 symbols. And Brady and I have talked about this quite a lot. This will probably get cut. But without maths, maths is the language of physics. The analogy I've used many times, it's like listening to a band. If you have a guitarist playing by himself, playing a guitar solo, that's fine and good. But when you add in the bass, the drums, the vocals, the keyboards, it's like so much different. It adds so much more to it and it transforms it. Similarly with maths, when you, you, you can talk about physics, you can talk about the forces, etc. But when you write it down, there's an elegance, there's a beauty. And that beauty is captured in the computer, in these physics engines, which take all these equations and solve them. Yeah, but my analogy is, if you go to the opera, the opera is beautiful, but if they're singing in Italian, you don't know what they're saying. Neither the makers nor the distributors of Portal 2 have paid us any sponsorship for this. Um, I don't... Laugh! <laughs> I did this in my own... T no, deadpan. <laughs> physicist, so no... Laugh! What a... I'm a physicist. I know nothing about cancer research, so no cancer research has been hindered by my playing of this game. <laughs> right. That's good.